Hi everyone, we're the Pass the Time Players, and we want to welcome you to our new story this evening, The King and His Three Daughters. Now before we get started, we'd like to invite you to like our Facebook page and make sure to follow our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our stories. But now, let's get right to our story and meet our cast. I'm Sally, and I'm your narrator. I'm Jeff, and I'll be playing the part of the father. I'm Emily, and I am playing the oldest daughter. I'm Kristen, and I'm playing the second daughter. I'm Madeline, and I'm playing the youngest daughter. I'm Kyle, and I will be playing the cook. I'm Michael, and I'll be playing the king. So now, sit back, relax, and get comfy, and enjoy the Pass the Time player story of the king and his three daughters. Once upon a time, there was a very rich king and his three beautiful daughters. The youngest was the prettiest, and the king loved her the most. The three daughters were each engaged to a prince and were all very happy. One day, the king was not feeling well. He began to think of how he would take care of himself in the future. So he called his three daughters and their princes to the throne room. I wanted to talk to you because I am getting older and may not be able to rule and take care of our kingdom and myself much longer. I need to decide which one of you will take my place in the future. I will take your place, father. Uh, please don't interrupt me. Sister, let him finish. Go ahead, father. Now I have thought about dividing my kingdom into three parts. One part for each of you. That will be fair. I will come and live for a while with each of you and will take with me my army of 100 men. A hundred men? Oh, but that's not all. I will divide my kingdom into three parts, depending upon your love and kindness for me. Then there was silence in the room. The king asked the oldest daughter. Daughter, how much do you love me? More than my own life. Come and live with me. I will take care of you. Oh, wait a minute, father. I love you more than anybody could love anyone in the whole wide world. The king then turned to his youngest daughter. And you, daughter, how much do you love me? I love you as a daughter should love a father, and I need you as the food needs salt. The king was surprised by his youngest daughter's answer. Comparing him to salt on food? He grew angry. Surely, out of all of his daughters, she thought, he thought that she loved him the most. He was very disappointed. And that's all? You think of me as food? Father, please, let me explain. You have misunderstood. She stared at her father with tears welling up in her eyes, for she did love her father very much. Daughter, I am very disappointed in you. I will divide my kingdom between your two sisters, and you will receive nothing. At that moment, the youngest daughter's prince left the room, and he did not come back. He did not want to be engaged to a poor princess. The king sat in silence, leaving the three daughters to wonder what had just happened. Sisters, I don't know how to express myself as you do, but you know I love our father as much as you do. You must be very happy right now. You both wanted this kingdom, and now it will all be yours. The two sisters were laughing at her. <laughs> <laughs> the king turned to his youngest daughter. I don't want to see you anymore. But father... Leave my palace and never come back. Crying princess left the palace, taking only the dress she wore, a party dress, and her wedding dress. Several days passed. The princess didn't know where she should go. Her heart was aching. She missed her father very much. I have been walking for days and I am so tired. One day she found herself at the edge of a lake when she saw some reeds. She looked at herself in the water and she saw a beautiful image. If I am to make my way in this world, I must disguise myself. It won't do me any good to have people know I am the princess whose father turned her away. I will take some of those reeds and make a dress. I need to cover this elegant dress I am wearing. 
I will also make a hat to cover my hair. From that day on, when people saw her, they started calling her Reed Girl. One day she arrived at the kingdom of a prince, the prince that she was supposed to marry. She had heard that his father had died, and so now he was the king. She also knew that he was looking for a princess. She still loved him, even though he had left her. She went to talk to the cook. I know that you have a lot of work with so many parties and so many guests. May I work here? The truth is I do have much, so much work to do, and I could use some help, but I cannot pay you. I will make sure you have food, but that's all I can offer. If you make a mistake, I will throw you out. Remember that. The princess worked very hard and never complained. She wasn't getting paid, but she did have food to eat. Once in a while, she would see the king as he made his way about the palace, and that made her feel very happy. Meanwhile, her father wasn't as rich as he was before because he had divided his kingdom between his two oldest daughters. With his hundred men, he went to the oldest daughter's house. I am happy to see you, father, but you bring too many people. I think that 50 men is enough for you. What are you saying? I gave you half my kingdom, and now you say you cannot offer lodging and food to myself and my 100 men? I am very disappointed in you, daughter. I will take my men and go to your sister's part of the kingdom. I am sure she will welcome me. So the king and his 100 men went to the part of the kingdom that he had given to his middle daughter. He told the second daughter how he had been treated at her sister's. She listened and then said, Please, father, sister is right. Why must you travel with so many men? You should fire them all. You can stay. But I cannot have these people here. What? I will go back to your sister. At least she wanted 50 of my men. Oh, you are so ungrateful. So the king fired half of his men and began his journey back to his first daughter's palace. But because of his old age, he traveled very slowly. And by the time he got to his older daughter's palace, she already knew what had happened. So she ordered her guards to close all the gates. When the king finally arrived with his 50 men, a guard from the high tower shouted, Go away, my lady doesn't want you here. The old king, having no money, sadly fired all his men and sold his horse. He started walking through the woods until he found an abandoned hut. It wasn't a palace, but it was a place he could stay warm and dry. So he made it his home. It was a very different life from the one he had managed when he called his daughters into the throne room that day. One day, his youngest daughter, now known as the Reed Girl, was walking in the forest looking for fruit for the king. She saw her father sitting on a rock. Oh, she so, felt so sorry for him and didn't understand why he was out here alone and looking so sad. The king didn't recognize her because of her dress and, and the hat and, and because he was almost blind. Good morning, sir. Do you live here alone? Yes. Who would want to take care of an old man? Many people in this world would care for an old man. I will help you. If you need something, just tell me. So she started cleaning his house, made the bed, and cooked a hot meal for him. You are a very kind girl. The Reed girl went to see her father every Sunday and other days when she could get away. She would do whatever she could for him. Soon, there was going to be a big party at the palace, and everyone was invited. But the cook said, Except you, Reed girl. You can't go to the party dressed as you are. So you'll, I guess, you'll have to stay home. When everybody in the kitchen had left to go dress for the party, the girl took off her reed dress and hat and dressed in her beautiful princess dress and combed her long, shiny hair. She went to the great party at the palace. Everyone looked at this beautiful girl. 
The king, apologizing to the other princesses, walked straight over to her. You care to dance with me? He didn't even recognize that she was the princess he had left. When the time was right and she had the opportunity, she escaped and went to hide in a room. <laughs> she was very happy, just being able to see and dance with the now king. The next day, the cooks couldn't stop talking about this beautiful girl at the party. Suddenly, the prince appeared at the door. You need something, your majesty? I noticed that you liked that beautiful girl that came to the party last yeah. night. Yes, I was wondering if I could see her again. Why don't you give another party? Maybe this time she'll, maybe she will come. That is a good idea. So the princess threw another party and the princesses, they all attended. And the princess, our princess, while she was even more beautiful than the first time, she was wearing her party dress this time, and the king, once again, only danced with her. And again, as soon as she could, she escaped without being noticed. Then the king threw a third party. This time, the princess attended wearing her wedding dress. She was so beautiful. Everyone admired her, the king most of all. You are the most beautiful girl I have ever seen and also the sweetest. I beg you not to leave. Marry me. The princess smiled, but before she could answer, she made her escape. The king was so sad that he completely lost his appetite. One morning, the cook told the reed girl to prepare breakfast for the king. Then, over the tray, she put the wedding ring that the king had once given her along with his promise. When the king saw it, he called out, Bring the cook! The cook was very afraid. What is the meaning of this? He showed the ring to the cook, the one that he found on his tray. Quickly, the cook told him that he was not the one who had prepared the king's breakfast that morning. It had been the reed girl. The king summoned the girl at once. Under her reed dress, she was wearing her wedding gown. Where did you get the ring that was over my plate? Someone gave it to me. Who are you? They call me Reed Girl, sir. What are you hiding under that reed dress? She started slowly taking her reed dress and hat off and revealed her beautiful wedding dress. Oh, dear, it's you. Oh, I have been such a fool. Please, can you ever forgive me? Since the princess loved him with all her heart, she agreed to forgive him, and they started planning their wedding. She went to the hut and brought her father to the palace. The wedding ceremony was magnificent, but the food tasted bland. It had no spices on it, and nobody was eating. The young king grew angry and called for the cook. Oh, the food here tastes so bland. Nobody is even eating the food. Then the princess, looking directly at her father, ordered the cook to bring some salt. Her father began to cry because it was then that he realized just how much his youngest daughter had loved him and he had treated her so badly. Please, my sweet daughter, forgive me. I have nothing to forgive, Father. I love you as much as food needs salt. And they all lived happy forever. The end. <laughs>